it's always great when I'm thinking about doing a topic and then something on Twitter hits and it's like, that plays right into the topic I was about to do. That's great. And the topic I was thinking about doing was all morality is tribal. And here's what I mean by that. The tweet that I saw that kind of triggered me to go ahead and do this video was about a Catholic priest who basically told pro-choice politicians, I'm not giving you communion unless you repent of your pro-choice positions. You cannot be Catholic and pro-choice. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is a, a, a perfect, a perfect example of how morality, more often than not, is really about picking a tribe and picking a tribe that you want to belong to, that you want to find yourself in. So on Catholicism, with Catholicism, communion is like the ultimate I belong type ceremony. It's only given to people who are practicing Catholics, who, are, who have you know, confessed their sins and who are living by the teachings of the church. And what this guy, this priest is saying is that if you are pro-choice, which is not at all a Catholic teaching, it is not at all a Catholic teaching that uh, countries should have their laws set up so that women can choose to terminate their pregnancies, um, then you're, you're not in the tribe. You have to go first and reconcile yourself. You have to change your ways before you can be counted as part of the tribe and, and take part in this communion service. So it's a wonderful example of how, you know, these, this priest is basically telling Catholics, pick your tribe. And really, this is something that goes all the way back to, to Jesus. You know, it, Jesus himself basically said, you need to pick your tribe and your tribe needs to include me first and foremost. You know, that's one, of the, that's one of the beauties and geniuses of Christianity is that it casts morality in a very personal relationship sort of way. Do you belong to Christ or not? How do you know you belong to Christ? Well, you obey his commandments. That's one way. And, you know, the other ways is do, do you love him? Do you have love for him above all others to the point where you will separate yourself from other people to whom you may have even natural ties. You know, Jesus himself said that for my name's sake, you will be brought before all, you will be turned over by your own family to people who will execute you. You know, he's basically saying you are going to be cast out of the natural tribe of your own family for my sake, because you, you say you belong to me. Because belonging to Jesus is its own tribe. You know, and then, you know, you get into the denominations and you're basically picking a tribe there. So with, um, you know, downright down to the family level, you know, Jesus himself said, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter or brother or sister more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus expects that you are to put him above every other relationship you have. So for for a Catholic, I can imagine for a Catholic politician to be told, look, you either have to uh, give up your pro-choice positions or you're never getting communion in my church again. Well, that, that Catholic politician has two choices now. He can either go find a more liberal Catholic church, and I'm sure they exist, because I'm just surprised that this isn't the, the default stance of every Catholic priest to basically say, oh, you're a pro-choice politician? Well, you're not getting communion here. Because that's explicitly against the teaching of the Catholic church. You know, the Catholic church's teaching is explicitly pro-life, and if you are, you know, working to support pro-choice, you are not doing the work, you're certainly not doing the work of the church. Now, we can get into all sorts of separation of church and state arguments as opposed to what belongs in its proper sphere. But I love it. I, I love how these this one priest in particular, and it should be all of them, if, if all priests were sincere Catholics, it should be all of them, 
should say, you know, you're going to be, you're going to go to Congress, you're going to go to your state legislature, and you are going to fight so that these innocent lives can be destroyed. Yeah, you're you're not you're not coming to the Lord's table until you you change, because you have to change. You are outside of communion. I love that, and. Any who, anybody who is a sincere Catholic is going to, to stand up and take note and say, ah, uh, yeah, I guess I've got something wrong that I need to fix. And, uh, you know, don't expect a lot of pro-choice politicians to do that, though, because a lot of them are not sincere Catholics. Don't expect Joe Biden to do it. Don't expect Nancy Pelosi to do it. They are hypocrites par excellence. They are liars about their Catholic standing because they don't support the teachings of the church. They don't. They, they prove it every single time, abortion rights and gay rights and transgender rights and everything you know that goes explicitly against the teaching of the church. They, they prove it every single time they come out in support of those things. So, you know, the Democratic Party is run by hypocrites. Yeah, I hate to break it to you if you didn't already know. So uh, anyway, I just thought that was really interesting, and I could go into more on on the morality, the tri the tribalism of that, but uh, I just want to keep it confined to this particular tweet uh, for now. So um, anyway, uh, please subscribe so that if I do an update, which I'm thinking about doing, if I do a uh, update that uh, to um, to this topic, and kind of flesh it out some more. Uh, you'll be along for the ride. So take care, and I will talk to you later.